Man, aren't they awesome? Isn't that just so important to get us going today? So important to prepare us for what the Lord has. And man, their songs are always on, the worship songs are always on point. You know, it's just, it's amazing. I'm, as we talk about this advanced series and we're talking about serving and, and just that, that one lyric right there, split the sea so we can walk right through it. Split the sea and show us, like the last song said, need to be. And it's just a powerful thing to me. If you have your Bibles this morning, if you would, turn to 1 Corinthians 9, and we're going to read 19 through 23. If you're there, say, got it. If you're not, say, hold on. You know, it's amazing, that picture of Carter, and he's still the best-looking pastor we got, still the best-looking guy up here that gets up here and shares, you know, as, as, as bad as he looks. He's still got it going on, and he's still, you know, when he sent that picture this morning, he was doing his devotion. He was spending time with the Lord and, and writing out his soap that we all are supposed to be doing and still just digging in for us to have a great service, a great message today. He's just an anointed and a great, great leader for our church. Amen. Amen. So here we are, 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 23. We're going to read it kind of fast, but it says, Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became like a Jew. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law. So as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law, but I am under Christ's law. So as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I became weak. To win the weak, I have become all things to all people so that by all possible means I might save some. And 23 says, I do all this for the sake of the gospel that I may share in its blessings. Would you pray with me? Lord, we just thank you for today, God. We just thank you that you've called us to advance in our life. You've called us to get out of the boat, God. You've called us to be what you've... You've called us, Lord, not only to be what you've called us to be, but you've called us to meet the needs of those around us. Whether we feel like we fit their plan or not, God, you've called us to advance the kingdom. You've called us to do what Paul said and become all things to all people so that you, God, through us might save lives. And really, that's what it's all about. So, God, I thank you for today. I thank you that you've got a, a message prepared. Just use me to share it with the people that we may continue to advance. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, I mean, what Paul was saying right there, he would do whatever it took to serve somebody, right? He would do whatever it takes to advance the kingdom of heaven, to let others see Christ in a new way, regardless of what their beliefs were and regardless of whether he felt like he was connected to them. He said, I could get on their level, I could become what I needed to be in order for them to see Jesus in me. Can't we all do that? Don't we all have that ability to get on someone's level, no matter if we feel like we know them or we relate to them, man, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can get down there, we can get where we need to be, and we can touch hearts and change lives. And that's what Paul's saying in that it's wordy, but if you really read it and think about it and allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you, speak to you through it, you will understand that, God, that Paul's saying, you can do this. I've done it. You can do it. And through that, you may save lives. So I love Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt's just a, an awesome guy. He was an awesome man in American history, but he's full of great quotes. And, and a couple of them I love, he says, the only man who never makes mistakes is the man who never does anything. So God's calling us to advance. This series, we're learning to advance. And the only one who's not going to make any mistakes is those who are just going to sit there and not do nothing, right? But really, in biblical thinking, in the way the Lord teaches, if we sit there, we are making mistakes. So take that and apply it to your life, man. If we will get out and be willing to step out of the boat and allow God to use us, it may not look like what we want it to look like, but I promise God can change lives and change those around us. And in the process, He's going to grow us through it. He also said, nothing in the world is worth having or worth doing unless it means effort, pain, and difficulty. I've never in my life envied a human being who led an easy life. But I have envied a great many people who led difficult lives and led them well. Hey, Karen and Matt Carbone, 
They're leading difficult lives down in Panama, but they're leading them well, amen? They're doing what they're called to do, to get out of the boat, to go do something. And you know what? I have a lot of admiration for them because they said, I'm willing to put myself, my fleshly desires aside, and I'm willing to dig in. There may be some effort. There may be some pain. I may miss home, but I'm doing this for God, and it's an awesome thing. You know, this has been a great series on advancing. We're called to advance the kingdom. We're called to advance the church. We're called to advance those around us. And in the process, we're advancing ourselves, right? Because really that's what Jesus wants us to do is advance ourselves. And if we're really, if we're really willing to do that, everything around us is going to begin to change. Everything around us will start to see something new happening in it because of our willingness to dig in for the Lord. Hey, Matthew 6, simply says, Seek first the kingdom of God. You know what that does? When we'll seek first the kingdom of God, it changes our heart, and we see a need to serve. You know, if God started to do something in you, more than just believing, more than just coming to church and checking a box, but if He's really begun to change our heart, we're going to see those around us that need something, right? Not judging them, but we're going to see those around us that we can help, we can listen to, we can just be there for, and it's going to begin to spur them on. It's going to change their mindset. It's going to get them to new places of the Lord. When we begin to do that, it is a, we realize it's better to give than to get. It took me a long time to understand that principle, you know. I knew who God was from a very young age, and I believed in the Lord, but I always thought it was what He could do for me. And we understand that if we'll begin to sow into others, it's so much better to give than to get. When we seek God, we begin to see needs around us, simply as that. You this morning, if you'll just think, if you'll just think for one second, there's needs all around your life. There's people in your life that need you to be a kingdom-minded person for them. And sometimes it's the hardest ones. It's those that don't think they need any help. But you know what? You're there for a reason, and God's given you access for a reason. And if you'll step out, you'll start to do some great things. We have examples all around us. But let's just all say Jesus one time. Are you, can you do that for me? Can we say Jesus where Carter can hear it on Facebook? On the count of three, we're going to scream Jesus, right? You ready? One, two, three. Jesus! Jesus. We've got Jesus, man. Jesus came, and though he was God, he served. Bottom line, he served. He tells us to follow him as he serves. We follow the Holy Spirit's guidance. We still are following Jesus' playbook. And we understand that He served people. Ephesians 2.10 reminds us of what Paul said, that we are all created for good works. We're all created for good works, or simply put, to serve. Not to serve to work our way into heaven, but to serve to meet other needs, to let those around us see God in us and change them. We're all created, all created to serve. Back in 1 Corinthians 9, verses 22 and 23, I want to reread that. It says, I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessing. You know what? Paul, Paul wasn't qualified to do this stuff. He was just a guy, but he says he worked towards it. He be Understand that we've talked about that, right? When you become something, it means to work towards what you're going for. To become something doesn't mean you just flip a switch. You've got to put in the effort. You've got to start to do what God's called you to do and work towards that thing to become what you need to be. It's not just as simple as saying it. You've got to dig in and put in the effort. You've got to become that thing. You may not feel ready or able, but if we are seeking and allowing Christ to guide us, we will become servant-minded. We'll become servant-minded. We'll understand that we've got to serve those around us. We'll become a servant-minded church. Not just sending somebody to Panama to serve, but we'll feel a need to go to the hospital here, to go to the nursing homes here, to do the things that we really don't want to do, but as a body and as we grow in faith and as we allow the Lord to spur us on, we'll be willing to go out and serve those people. And it will grow us in the process. Paul says... He will work to reveal Jesus to people no matter what. We have to work. But you may ask yourself, or we may be wondering, we're hearing this stuff about serving, and I'm, I'm kind of hearing what you're saying, but uh, first, if you're going to serve, 
you have to deal with our heart and our mindset. If you've allowed God to re- start to reprogram your mind, you, and you daily get up and, and transform your mind, you'll begin to understand that in your heart in the process. See, if you start doing it in your mind first, and you're willing to go through that and work and become it in your mind, your heart will start to take notice. Your heart will start to change. And those people that annoy you, those people wherever they're at that you don't feel called to serve, something will start to change in your heart and you'll be willing to step out and begin serving them. It's first got to start in our mind and then our heart takes over and look out because God's going to do some amazing stuff. Galatians 2.20, Paul shows in his humility, he shows in his humility the guy that once thought he was somebody great, the guy that once persecuted Christians, thought in the world's eyes he was something big, he understand that it had to swap. He had to flip the script and say, not I live, but Christ lives in me. Do you believe in God this morning? Raise your hand. You're here. You believe in God, but do you believe He's living in you? Have you really? You may think it, but have you let it set in here and really soak that He is in you, that He's living in you? You understand that Christ lives in you this morning. Start to think that way. Start to see that he can do so much through you. Paul changed his heart and his thinking to become a form of Jesus in serving others. we got to grab this. we got to understand that we can become Jesus to somebody around us. To advance the kingdom, we've got to become what Jesus has called us, us to be, and that is his extension here on earth. Through the Holy Spirit, we got to grab this if we're going to advance in our growth, and what the Lord wants to do around us. we got to serve. But we have to serve by having awareness to God, wherever we are, knowing that His presence is living in us. You know, when we think of Jesus, it's easy to think of the guy who walked on water. It's easy to think of the guy who healed the sick, restored sight to the blind, changed water into wine. Some of us really like that one, right? But Jesus was a guy, you know, He raised people from the dead. But why did He do these things? It wasn't just to put on a show. So many times we think only Jesus could do that, and he's dead and gone. He rose and he's at the right hand of the Father. But no, Jesus has given us his Holy Spirit. We forget why Jesus did those things, amen? It wasn't to show people around him and just have them automatically start start thinking that that he was that he was God here on earth. It wasn't for that reason. He lowered himself. He listened. He engaged. And people where they were at, that's true service. We've got to be willing to lower ourselves, to do like Jesus, lower ourselves to meet those needs, and people will start to buy into what we're offering, right? People will start to believe that we're really there for them. Oh, Teddy, one more time. We all have heard this quote, but Teddy Roosevelt said, People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. When we're willing to meet people where they're at, that's where miracles happen. When we show them how much we care, that's when God can move. You know, serving is simply being a spiritual waiter. That's all it is. Like a waiter in a restaurant, it's being a spiritual waiter. As in, be still and wait on God. Wait on the Lord. A waiter simply takes orders. He takes orders and then he goes and carries that out. If we'll listen to what God's asking us to do, if we'll take those orders and we'll go and we'll sow those seeds and we'll speak into people's life, or if we'll just go and listen and wait on Him, He will do everything He's promised us He'll do. He just needs us to be willing to go, to serve, to wait on people. There's so many examples in our life of people we can serve. There's so many. I mean, you have, you have the kids' ministry. You have kids around us. You have your own kids. There's kids. There's elderly there's lost people. There's the needy. Freddie, there's people in other countries that you're called to. I mean, there's all, all sorts of people. There's the church. Man, we can be a part of this deal on a bigger level. Our family. Everyone is looking for something. Whether they know it or not, whether they understand it or not, whether they believe in God or not, we live in a country where everyone is searching for something. They're searching for it, whether it's through... Sin, sinful stuff or whatever it is, but everyone through money or, or progress in their career, or whatever it is, everyone is searching for something. I promise you. And it's up to us to show them that that's Jesus. 
because we, we know the answer to all their troubles. We know that they'll never find fulfillment in a bottle. We know that they'll never find fulfillment in making more money. But we do know, and what we need to share with them, is, is that fulfillment comes from Jesus and Jesus alone. Somebody yell Jesus. 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 That's what they need. That's what they need from us. And as we advance in our life with the Lord, as we advance in being kingdom-minded, it's simply sharing Jesus, man. We could stop right there. We could yell Jesus one more time and be done. You know, most of you know my story, at least on some level, but, but I went through a lot of stuff in my life, and, and I was down at the bottom of the barrel, and I knew who God was, man. I knew, and I believed in God. But, man, God had to become real to me. He had to become real to me. And when God changed me, it was a step in that process. When you're here this morning, you say, you know what? I believe in God. I kind of think I know Him. Or if you're to that point where you say, you know, God, you're changing me. I'm going to new levels with you. It's an awesome and powerful thing. It, it fills you up. It inspires you. It, it, it splits the sea so you can walk right through it even. But when you start to walk through that deal, when you commit to living for the Lord, when you commit to serving and advancing His kingdom, and you start to sow into other people, and then you see them get it, my goodness gracious, that's when your faith is going to skyrocket because you're seeing God work through you. You're understanding that He can use you to grow other people. And when you see that light bulb come on in their life, man, it takes your faith off the charts on another level. It's a powerful thing. And so when God began to use me just with what I'd been through, nothing magical, just with what I'd been through, he allowed me to speak into other people's lives. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't really understand it. But when it began to happen and I saw them change, I started to see God in a whole new way, guys. I started to understand that there is power in what He does and that all the things I had been through, all the junk I had inflicted on myself, though it was meant to destroy me, God was using it to glorify Him and build me up in the process. And all of that, all of those struggles... All of that mindset that I continued to have at times, it started to get farther and farther away. It started to fade. And man, it's an awesome thing. You know, we've heard it so many times, but we just can't be fans. We can't be just a fan of the Lord. We can't just be a fan and say, you know what, I believe. I love to come and get my worship on. I'm just a fan of the Lord. In that mindset, we can't be that way. Fans see it but aren't ever on the field, right? You can be the biggest Cowboys fan in here, but you ain't ever going to suit up and get out there and play with them. You're just a fan. You may believe in them, and you may think that they can do it, but you're never going to be the one out there doing it. God gives us the opportunity to be on His team, to be out there doing it for His glory. You don't have to be just a fan. You can step into the game. You can step in and get in the fight, and God will use you to win the battles that are going on around you. And through that, the battles that are still in you, man, they'll start to leave. They'll start to evacuate. And that's where advancement starts. When you jump in the fight, man, you begin to advance yourself and others and split the sea further. Jesus served. Jesus served. Peter served. Paul served. It's time we serve. If we're going to take hold of this series, if we're going to understand the advancement of Christ in our life and of Christ around us, we've got to serve. It's time to get in the game and join the fight, church. We serve God simply by serving others in the kingdom advances. You know, our country's in a state that it, it's scary sometimes, but man, if we'll get in the game, if we'll begin to serve, and just those around us, God will start to change that, and the ripple effect will go on and on and on. Serving keeps us alive. You can have a great experience with the Lord, but if you're not going to serve through this deal, you're going to slowly start to wither. You're going to become unsuccessful in what God's created you for. You're going to start to wither and be chopped off the vine. You've got to continue that mindset of advancement, of serving. You know, when I understood how important serving was, it gave me new hope. It gave me a new destiny, and it will for you if it hadn't already. It gives you hope. You know, it'll give this church new growth if we really grab a hold of this.
It's full in here. It's, a great, it's great to see so many people in here. But we don't want to stop, do we? We want to continue to advance. We want to see the church grow, and not just in here, but out of here, man. I don't want to just see missionaries in Panama. I want to see missionaries elsewhere. We can grow. We can advance. We can continue to go. It takes time and it takes energy. But anything in life you want to be good at is going to take time and energy. Are you willing to put in the time? Are you willing to give the energy for a crucial change in your life to take place? Not just in us, but those around us. And even more importantly, the older I get, the more I understand that it's for those coming after us. See, if we've got the Lord, if we're advancing with Him, if He's done some stuff in us, we're getting in a pretty good spot, you know? But there's another, there's another group coming after us. They can be older, they can be younger, but there are others that are needing us to be that to them so they can go to the next level. It, it, it just speaks to me so much because I think about my granddaddy. My granddaddy was a captain in the Army, in the U.S. Army, and he fought in the Battle of the Bulge on the Rhine River. He was under General Patton. And there have been a few books that he was talked about in, about his service and how he led his men through those times and how he always was willing to be out in front of them and do what other people might have just asked them to do. He led, he served. And he was in a big battle in World War II, this Battle of the Bulge. It was an ep epic battle. And he operated by serving his men. And that, it just sticks with me to understand that. But you know what's really cool? You know what's really neat about that? Is it didn't stop when he got back from Germany. It didn't stop when he got home and got back in the real world over here and, and had an easy life. It kept on going. He never changed. He served others after the war. And he led them to Jesus. Jesus was real to him. Jesus had brought him through some stuff. And he knew it wasn't about him. He knew Jesus had brought him through that to serve others. And that's changing his grandson. That's changing his great-grandkids. Because he was willing to see what God had done in him and did for him. And he was willing to pay it forward and continue to advance for the glory of heaven. He was the humblest man I've ever known. And the cool thing about it, as prayer, that you pray for people, the service you do and the time you spend in prayer, God hears those prayers. And He may not do it right then. He may do it after you're dead and gone, but He's going to continue to do the, what you've asked Him to do in prayer for your kids, your grandkids, and so on and so forth. See, so many times we get caught up in the right now, that it's just going to have to happen right now. But if we dig in in prayer, if we serve people, it's going to change for generations and generations in generations, remember, those that come after will be changed by your commitment to advance the kingdom through service. It's not just about you. It's not just about right now. It's about years upon years after you're gone. And that's a pretty cool thing to be a part of, isn't it? You think that Jesus gives us that opportunity? That's pretty, pretty impressive. That's pretty awe-inspiring. The least we could do is accept that. I mean, the guy that created the world, that said, let there, let there be light, gives us this opportunity to serve for him. That's a lot better than General Patton. He gives us the opportunity to serve. So this Thanksgiving, we have Thanksgiving coming up, don't we? That's an opportunity to serve. It may not look like what we want it to, some families. It may be kind of, you know, you really don't want to be serving these people, some of them, but it is an opportunity to serve your family, to serve those around you. To humbly serve, love, and change the course of lives just by doing life with your family over a meal. By giving thanks for what is really important. You know, it's about us. Excuse me, it's about others. But God is faithful. And the blessing He gives us because of it is something money can't buy. You cannot put a price tag on what it does inside of you when your faith grows because of your willingness just to do a simple thing leads people to a new place. When Matt Carbone was willing just to serve where he worked and climbing wind turbines, and that led to a bass player who had never been to church up here playing two years later. Just being willing, man, you never know what's going to happen through that. 
he can't put a price tag on it. So I ask you today, will you become a participant? Will you get in the game? Will you get out of the cheap seats and step on the field? It's a question you have to ask yourself. Maybe you're kind of there. Maybe you're, you're on the sidelines even. But will you really do the work it takes to become a starter for God? You have a choice to make. It doesn't matter how old or how young you are. God's given us a choice. Will you advance the kingdom through serving? It's a choice, simple as that. The groundwork is set. Jesus gave us a step-by-step book to learn from. Advancement, it's a cool thing. Whether you're thinking about military, whether you're thinking about sports, whether you're thinking about your career, it's a cool thing. But to know that you have the opportunity to advance the kingdom of heaven, man, that'll shake you to your core. And how could you not say yes to that opportunity? Would you bow with me? Lord, we just thank you so much for today, God. I just thank you that you've called us to be your hands and feet. You've called us to advance, Lord, not just in our own walk, though that's it's so important. You've called us to advance for the benefit of others. As I see heads bowed in here and, and hearts open, I just pray that you push something into them that will inspire them to go step out of the boat in a new way, that will inspire them to change those around us, whether it's at our workplace, whether it's with our kids to serve them in a new way, whether it's with our spouses, our parents, whether we don't even see it yet, but it's for the generations upon generations to come. God, you've called us to serve, and we thank you for it. So we're going to have the altars open. If you want to come up, I'll pray with you. If you just want to stand there and worship, it's a good thing. But ask the Lord to speak to you this morning. Ask the Lord to touch your heart. Ask Him to show those people around you to you that you can step out and serve in just a simple way and build on those successes. As you see God operate, it's going to grow your faith, man. And it's going to instill something in you to do more and more. And who knows, you may be in Panama someday. You may be right where you're at now in changing the world around you. But He split the sea, and we can walk right through it. In Jesus' name, amen.